today we're going to be making some pan fried chicken, collard greens, and red rice on Sundays. We used to love looking forward to see that on Sunday because you know you got a good meal. And then if you don't watch out, the preacher get there first. You might don't never get a piece of leg or, or, or thigh or something like that because all you eat is the back. All right, what we got here is some collard greens. And what you want to look, look for uh, uh, on, with the collard greens is you always, during the winter time, you usually get collard greens in between uh, October and, and February when they're steady growing. But most of the time, after a fr freeze, you look for a little bit of purple around the edge. That's when you want to use them in a salad. But other words than that, you can't beat a collard green because how healthy collard greens is for you. But the way we usually prepare it, this is the way I learned, is to, is to get all the grit and get everything off it, we call snapping a collard greens. And then you take your hand and you scoop it down just like that. And then you wash it. Most people, that's the way you do it. You get all the dust or any grit, anything on it, then you do it. We don't, we don't ever cut it, because when you cut it, it's hard to cook it, because sometimes it just cook up on you before you know it. But once you got a script like this here, you, watch it, you wash it off real good. And, once you, and you just want to rinse them lightly now. That's the reason why you pop it, because you want to make sure you just rinse them good. Some people want to wash them, and if the water ever turn green on you, you're starting to take everything out of them. See, so the main thing is you pop them to get all the grit loose, loosen up on them or uh, any sand, and the minute the water hit them, everything will go right off them right quick, see? And when you cook it like that, it just make it so much better for you. In here, in this part right here, I got like a half a gallon of water with some turkey neck boiling in it. And what I'm gonna get ready to do is add like about a half a cup of onion into it. Mine though, I do all this by feeling. I'm free, freehand cooking, you know. I know how to do this by feeling. I can see. And smell, ooh. All right. Then now I'm gonna add a little, a couple punches of garlic. Garlic do good in it. Mine, the ice, a punch, not a handful. Punch. All right. Got your garlic. Now, a little pinch of salt. You don't got that turkey neck in there, so you got want to be careful with your salt. Got a little pepper. Ooh. A little pepper here. And a pinch of brown sugar. See? And that help keep you a little bit of the acid down in it and I keep it going. And a little bit of lemon juice. Now you can use lemon juice or you can use vinegar. A apple cider vinegar, I do this is good. And the reason why I cook them with this stuff is because if you don't eat all, you can put them up and it'd be right there for you because they kind of keep it. And even get a chef ready for you. So you don't have to have put it in the freezer. You can put it in the box and it'd be there for a week or so. So I'm gonna add a little lemon juice to it. All right. Now we can stir it a little bit and we'll put a lid on it for a second. Then we add our greens to it. And boy, you gonna have one good collard greens. All right, time to add the collard greens to the pot now. Now that's the way you do it. It always seems like you got so much, but you got to remember, collard green cooked down pretty good. All of this right here, a good collard green eater, this probably wouldn't feed no more about five people, five to six people by the time they cook. But it usually cook down pretty good, but you want them tender because collard cream could, could get a little tough on you. All right. You wanna get them in there? Get them in the boiler? Stir them a little bit. Oh yeah. He go, now we let him cook. We let him cook for about an hour and 30 minutes on, on a floor boil, not a fast boil, floor boil. And then you will have something good. 
So all right, that's our collard greens right there starting. All right, while the collard greens is cooking, you start our red rice. Right here, I got some rice in the pan, and I got your, some water, then I got tomato sauce. And all of these play a special part in your red rice. So now, I'm gonna go over to the pot, and right here, I got some onion, onion with a little bit of canola oil, and this is the way, the way I saute my onion in the canola oil, because I don't want to use no meat. Sometimes some people use meat, they use smoked sausages, and different other, and, and different other type of uh, neck bone, or uh, that, that type of stuff. The day I'm cooking the red rice sauce without no meat, but they're using all these natural spices that I got, it make you think you got a couple pounds in there. So this is the way we could do them, this is the way we could do it the old, the old way, because we didn't have that kind of meat when we were cooking red rice back in them days. Man, salt and pepper was the best thing in the world, want you, and time. Know how long you cook it. And knowing when to take it off is when it's good. So now I'm gonna try it right now. I'm gonna add a little onion to the pot. About a half a cup of onion. All right, let's pinch of ginger. Pinch of salt. Mine now, I'm freehand cooking. Just do what I learned how to cook. And a punch of pepper. You use, we usually would use a punch of brown sugar, but you can't put your brown sugar till you got all your sauce and got your sauce cooking and got your water and everything in it. Then you add a, sp a, a, a spoon or a punch of brown sugar to bring your taste around. So you know one thing? That brown sugar will keep that sauce from eating your heart out. So that's the way to go. And when you want the best, I'm going to try to give you the best now in the simplest way. Now I'm going to stir all this in. Oh yeah. The onion getting nice and brown in there. I want, and you know, I'm going to let some of the onion get nice and brown because the onion too carry all the flavor. You get it all cooked in. It ain't so hard to just flip. Now I go add some, add my water to it. I, I, I'm gonna add only like a quart of water, and I'm gonna let that get heat up a little bit. And when you let it do like that, let that come to boil. Then you done got all your seasoning and everything cooking into that, cooking into the broth, and it, so it make them real easy to get into the sauce. Now, when you add garlic to a red sauce, it get fussy. Oh man, it look bad. The only time it looks smooth, when you cook them. So you got to cook them and get them into a boil, and then that joker all of a sudden break, and man, that's the prettiest thing you will see. There's a good red rice sauce, then you know you got a good red rice. Oh yeah. Right now I'm gonna get ready to add the sauce to it because he got my cooking, the seasoning and everything. I'm gonna cook it and I'm it in the water. So right now I'm gonna add the sauce to it. I'm gonna add about two quarter sauce to it. All right. Now you got to bring this to a ball. This to, this the key. The key to red rice sauce, the key to cooking the red rice sauce is you got to make sure and cook them. You can just put them together and let them in the pot for a little bit, then pour them on top of the rice. You don't work that way. You want the season all the way through that red rice, just the way you got to cook them. And special dealing with that garlic in there. You got to bring that temperature up so that, so that garlic could just explode. When it explodes, it gets as pretty as anything you want to see. Looking for nice looking sauce. See how that gravy's starting to plan out? And, and it's, that gravy is planning out right now, and you got your real nice, nice smooth gravy, and that garlic is already done starting to pull itself together. Now I'ma try, I'ma add a little sugar. A little brown sugar. Brown sugar is the best one to use. It'll help 
at a, at a, at a half smooth everything out and keep that acid from bothering you. Now, we let it this boil for a little second, then we'll put it on the rice and it can be ready to put in the oven. I'm gonna ladle some of the sauce on, on the red rice and to show you how much sauce to really put in the pot to make this rice come out the way you want them. Where either you could count every grain or you want them closer together. But I'm gonna show you how I do it, how I learned from my grandmother. All right. Just do it like this. Lay the little man. Now you got the sauce made, and you might not use all the sauce, but you could use it for other things, or either put it in the freezer till the next time. And what you want to do is stir it, stir the sauce with the rice like that. Make sure to stir it good. When you see that much grain, if you can see the grain that much right there, when you can barely see the grain on the top, then you know you need to go with a couple more scoop of it. Oh, you stir it like that right there a little bit. Let it come to the top and let it, let it screw back off. Now you want to top it off and put it in the oven. On the 350 for about 30 to 35 minutes. It should be ready, and you should have yourself some good looking red rice, and good eating red rice too. But the thing about gullah style cooking, is everything has to taste good and everything has to smell. And the smell is what get you ready to eat your dinner. And that's what make everything go down smooth. So don't care what it is, if you just one bowl of rice, it has to taste good. And it has to have the smell, because I tell you, if you can't smell them, you don't you need to leave them alone. Gullah Grub will be right back with Grandma's Pan Fried Chicken. Don't go away. <laughs>